Hello and welcome to whiteboard testing session with me, Andrew Morton. Uh, today what I want to show you is how unit tests can be used to document the behaviour of a class under test so that when you, when you want to use one and you don't understand what's going on you can go to the unit test and that will explain to you uh, what is correct usage of the class, uh, what kind of errors you should find and under what circumstances. So, as a real life example, um, we had this class which was called Address Parser. Now, the idea of it was uh, you could pass through a comma separated list uh, string of uh, host and ports and it would extract them for you into a nice little list. The problem was, when I was doing it, I had all I had was the class name Address Parser. I didn't know what what was considered a valid address. So when I started, I did, when I think of address, I think of URL, uh, which generally means I think of web address. So I put in uh, HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 9000. Uh, the problem was, when I ran it through the address parser, uh, what I ended up getting was this error, which basically said expected string object, uh, but got three. So I, can, I could not interpret this error. I was like, but, but I'm passing it a string. I don't understand you. So I went to the unit test so I could see what was going on. The problem is the unit test literally had a single test in it and that test was should pass successfully. Great, so what it's given me is an example, you know, an example of what is considered a valid thing to pass but it doesn't answer any possible questions as to what could be in that string, what it's going to do with that string, you know, when it gets things that it doesn't expect. It just wasn't helpful. So, after going through the code and trying to understand exactly what it was doing, uh, I expanded the unit test out to be a lot more uh, documentation as to what the class under test was actually doing. Uh, so to take the first problem, what it was actually saying was the way the address parser worked is that it splits on colon. Now when it splits on colon it's expecting the bit on the left of the colon to be the host and it's expecting the port on the right of the colon to be the port. Of course when you've got a full URL you don't have that. So what this expected string but got three was trying to say was you've supplied me three bits of a URI whereas I can only really deal with two. So that's one of the tests we wrote. Should error if more than two URI parts supplied. What that also meant was we could actually run it and see what error is getting out and we go well that error doesn't tell us anything, you know. Otherwise, you end up in the exact problem I was in, which is, I can't debug this from that. It, it's there's nothing there to tell me why I'm getting that error based on that string. So from that, we also changed the error message. Uh, it now does a more sensible explanation, which says you need to supply a host and you need to supply a port. That's it. Uh, similarly, we expanded the test out to try and put um, document some more of the behaviours. So, for example, if you only passed in localhost, what would it do? Well, in this case, it actually defaults a port if there are none supplied. So, we've got examples in there of just localhost or localhost colon, because that's also a valid just passing through the host. And the assertion states that when you get the list out, you end up with localhost with whatever the default port is. We also have another one which says it should error if no host is supplied. Uh, so, again, we know we can default the port, but we don't actually want to default the host. So, that's actually now documented behaviour of the class. And that's it. So, when you come to use unit tests, remember that they're not just there for regression tests. They're also there for the people who come after you who want to understand the behaviour of your class and 
yes, although they could read through the code and do it, especially if you've got you know, nicely well written code, it's still a lot more difficult than being able to see there's a test for it and the test says this is what I'm expecting this class to do. Thank you very much.